Good morning, everyone. How are you all today? It's good to see a crowd. I think we have a few people still sleeping, it looks like, with the empty seats. They didn't spring forward. Uh, before I get started, uh, Robbie, uh, Tim, I thought I'd pick on myself. A couple weeks ago, I said that we went deep into the bench to find some cooks. They went deep into the bench today <laughs> to have me speak, so, <laughs> so hold the tomatoes. <laughs> Thank you for cooking this morning and getting us started, and I'm glad you folks are here today. So before I get started and uh, uh, share a little bit of my faith and a little bit of how I make it through each day and, and each day of my faith, uh, let us bow our heads and go to the Lord and hope that he gives me the words. So, Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning uh, to worship you. So, Lord, I just pray that my words would be your words, that you would guide me through this message that I'm about to give, and that it would somehow touch our lives and guide us through each week. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Jerry Moore, and uh, sometimes I think there's new faces and we forget, and this is my family over here. My wife Kay, my son Davis, daughter Blakely, and son James, and Vivian is our uh, adopted child. So <laughs> she kind of adopted us, and we're glad she's, she hangs out with us. But faith, when Paul said, share your faith, uh, I don't know about you, but in my life when someone says, I want you to teach this class, and you go back and you start researching all the materials, and you, you learn it better than anything you've ever learned and you get up there and you teach it and you're so excited and you're looking out and everybody's like uh, they're not quite as excited as you but you spend all this time preparing and, and getting learning it so the best way to really learn is to, is to teach and but when Paul said share your faith it really forced me the last couple of weeks to constantly think about my faith and what my faith means to me and the first thing I thought was well I was raised Catholic uh, you know, I was baptized Catholic, received my first communion, uh, was confirmed in the eighth grade. That, that was my faith. My religion was my faith for a long time. I mean, my parents were devout. I mean, we went to church every Sunday. We were on the road. Sometimes we went to the Spanish Mass, and we didn't even speak Spanish, but we were in church. You know, uh, I guess that goes back to my parents. When they went to church, the Catholic Church, it was Latin, and they didn't speak Latin either. Uh, but they were there, and they were there worshiping. So I thought, well, th that's my faith. Uh, that was the early stages of my faith. Uh, after I got married, my wife and I came from two different faith backgrounds. She had been raised Presbyterian, and I was Catholic, so we found the perfect compromise, the Episcopal Church. So I uh, still had some of those Catholic uh, tendencies or the you know the scripture and the readings and the, and the format of the service but it was also a protestant church so that worked well and and since then you know we've just we go where god guides us uh we've been in different denominations but you know we feel like if we're worshiping uh the lord and our faith is in jesus christ we're we're in a good spot so that's become our faith is is christ jesus and all that he does but there was a time in my life where I was invited to a Bible study, and I think that's when my faith really came alive, because prior to that, and I was 30 years old, and I had gone through Catholic schools until I was in the eighth grade, and like I said, I was in church every Sunday uh, that I lived at home with my family, but I never really knew my faith. I never really knew why I was going through these motions until I had an opportunity to go, and we started with the study of Hebrews. And it meant very little to me, because I had read scripture, but I never really understood it. And we had a, a priest once that said, if you don't read and understand the word, and he gave a good example. He said, it's like going to uh, your wife's family reunion, and they're all talking about Uncle Harry. And remember the time he got up on one ski and he fell and he did this and he did that and everybody's laughing. And you just don't quite find it funny because you never knew Uncle Harry and it's not very funny to you. Well, that was kind of like how my faith felt. 
Like I would go to church, I would listen, and yeah, it all sounded good, and I wanted to be there, and I knew I wasn't God, so I was going to worship a God, uh, but I never really understood it. But when I started to understand it, and I started to understand, you know, from Genesis to Revelation, and I started to read and started to discuss it, wow, church came alive for me, you know, because when they would do the reading, I'd go, oh, yeah, I remember studying that person. Or when the minister in his message would talk about something in this part of the Bible and this other part of the Bible, then I was like, oh, yeah, I get that. I understand that. I understand why I'm here. And now I'm on a journey. And I'm not always perfect about reading my Bible, but I do try. I guess it's not even a Bible anymore. I read my phone. <laughs> because my Bible's on my phone. Uh, it's a lot more convenient. I can read a lot of different places. But, and I'm working my way through Psalms. It's really hard. It's kind of where I've kind of got hung up in the Old Testament. I've made it from Genesis to Psalms. Uh, I started with the New Testament and read that, and then I started with the Old Testament. I'm kind of stuck in Psalms, but I'm going to eventually get through there. That's my Lenten discipline is to finish Psalms this year. I won't tell you how long it's taken me to get through it. But... Uh, but yeah, uh, further. Uh, but I think that's to me, you know, and when I, so I started thinking this week, you know, what is my faith? What does faith look like to each one of us? And, and I think it's clearly different. And I think even in your own life and like my life, my faith is different every day. Some days I feel excited and fired up for my faith. Some, some Sundays I come in here and I'm just, I want to hold my hands up high and just worship God. I'm just fired up. And other Sundays, I'm like, gosh, what, what's going on? You know, I, I need a little more. And that's with like, that's not circumstantial. There's nothing good or bad that maybe happened in my life that brought me to that point. But we, we have that too. I mean, this has been somewhat of a, a tough week. Uh, a young lady that worked for me for many years uh, had a child three years ago who about two years ago was diagnosed with cancer and that child passed away last week and we went to the funeral service yesterday down in Franklin and as I'm thinking in my mind about faith and courage and getting through situations like that and I watched as you know the parents and the grandparents and the siblings of the family and the people that gathered around them to watch that young life apart and to hear the words from uh, the pastors who, who oversaw or conducted the funeral service and it just it's hard to understand you know so that's a clearly a, a low point in these folks faith and but some people can take that and it catapults them to a higher level of their faith it makes them stronger so I mean that's an extreme of of where we have to be that's kind of the toughest spot to be and I just sat there the whole time and just contemplated how, how do you get through that how do you get through that and without faith I don't think you do without faith in, in God a, a, a sovereign perfect God you, you don't make it through that so we, we all have that and when you read the word of God, and one thing, I think about faith, and I think about the, the, the great characters of the Old Testament, Abraham, Noah, Moses, David. And I try to look at them and say, you know, like we look up to them. We look up to what they did. But were they perfect? Far from perfect. I mean, you look at, Abraham's life and God called him and, and he answered the call but even as he was going through it knowing that God gave him this call and God said I'm going to be there with you he still struggled and he still had fear and he was still scared when he was confronted uh, you know with someone wanting his wife and trying to appease and uh, and he regretted what he had done but he made it through that and he went on and he had more struggles beyond that. Uh, so I asked myself, why does God give us these characters in the Bible to set our faith to? 
And when I think about it, it makes perfect sense because we can all relate to these characters in the Bible. We can relate to Abraham's life where sometimes you feel like God's giving you strength and you're excited and you're like, I can, I can do anything. And then a week later, you're like, wow, where'd that go? And maybe you see it with folks that, that come to Christ and they're excited in the beginning and they're in church and they're participating and they're, they're on fire. And then all of a sudden you're like, where did so-and-so go? What happened? You know, somebody say something? Did I say something? Did I offend them? Is that why they left? And I think in Hebrews it says that we run the race. And sometimes I have to look at my faith like a marathon, which I've never run, and I have no plans to run. <laughs> I'm sure some of you have run one, but I have not. You know, I run a 5K and go, why did I do that? You know, halfway through. At the end, it's kind of fun, but I don't run many of those. Now, my kids, they can run. But I think they ask themselves, why do I run? You know, it's not easy. And I think our faith, when you look at it as a marathon, it makes a lot of sense. Because if you're at all a runner, and I've run a little bit, but not a lot, is that you'll get to a certain point in running, and there's a good high. You're like, wow, I feel good. Look at this, you know. Made it through that first half mile. <laughs> or someone else might say, I made it through the first three miles or five miles. But I think that's how our faith is. It's, it's, there's going to be times where you just feel excited and you feel on fire. And then there's going to be other times when you're down. And I think the most important thing to remember is that's normal. And, and if you don't believe me, go read the story of Noah when God told him to build the ark. You know, he, he, he didn't just always say, this is, I'm, I'm doing the right thing, you know. But there was people telling him, you know, what are you, crazy? And I think people are going to tell us that in our faith. I think the scripture reading this morning in 1 Corinthians, Paul was telling the people at Corinth, he was like, they're going to think you're foolish. They're not going to think you're wise by believing in a risen Christ. You know, that's foolishness. But God, he's wiser than those. He knows. And one scripture that sticks with me, I heard, I don't remember when I heard it. It was probably 10 years ago. But it was the beginning of it. And in 1 Peter uh, chapter 2, he writes, Dear friends, I urge you, as aliens and strangers in this world. And it stuck with me because sometimes I do feel like an alien when I'm following Christ. I, f I feel very different, whether I'm in a setting with a bunch of guys and the language is not appropriate or the things they're not talking about, and, I, and they're laughing and joking, and I just I don't feel like I belong sometimes. But I want to be there, but I don't feel like I belong. And I think... It's a reminder to myself during those times that I don't feel like I belong, I should be thankful. I should be thankful that God's put that faith in my heart and said, you don't belong here. This is not your home. As much as I want it to be my home, you know, whether it's through my enterprise or uh, what I do in the community, I, I want that to all be successful and I want it to look good, but I think God's telling me, it's not your home. I have a purpose for you here, and I want you to do the best you possibly can, but this is not your home. And I think we have to remember that because society and culture will tell us that this is our home, and we have to put all of our energy and all of our focus into this life. But it, that's not, it's not why we're here. And I think that can be a, a struggle at times is like why – why did you put me here? What is my purpose? So it, it makes me think of just other things. You know, I think of my life and I think of faith and, and where does my, where has God really spoken to me? And I think coming to Highlands for our family eight years ago uh, was God really demonstrating his powerful faith in several different ways. And, and it's interesting living in Highlands. I mean, I've, I've lived in quite a few places. Uh, I was born in St. Augustine, Florida. My dad moved us around quite a few times. I lived in Tampa, Jacksonville, kind of settled in West Palm Beach, kind of grew up there. After we got married, Kay and I 
got married in West Palm Beach, but we lived in uh, Gainesville, Florida, and Tallahassee, Florida. We moved us back to Gainesville, Florida. I always wanted to be in Gainesville. I'm a gator, and I just wanted to stay there, but God said, no, that's not where you belong. <laughs> and then he put us in Stewart, uh, and then we came here. But I think the interesting thing about being here is that you meet so many people that want to come here, and they feel like they're called here to these mountains and to this environment, maybe not in the middle of February, like we had it two weeks ago, but they do. It, it is a beautiful and it's a wonderful place to live. And everybody struggles. You come up here, you're like, what can I do for a living? How, how can I make it work? How can we live here? Some of it might be a little bit of pie in the sky. You came on vacation and think you're going to feel that way 365 days of the year, but you quickly realize, like, no, you have to work just like everywhere else. But getting here was something my wife wanted to do from the time we met and married in 1993, is live in the mountains. But that wasn't God's plan, you know. So it was faith and waiting for an opportunity to come along. And when, b before we got here, I had been working with my brother a little bit. He had a Kilwins franchise in Stewart, Florida. And I just want to share this one story of, of God's faith with you and just how he moved in our lives and just... It's neat because sometimes you need that. Sometimes you need those little events that, that strengthen your faith. Uh, and I had been working with him, and I was doing some insurance work, and I had like this time I worked for the federal government for 11 years and one of my own business, and I, I call it my walk in the desert. For about five years, I was trying to find where I was supposed to be, and it wasn't always pretty. It was a struggle. And uh, so I had worked with him a little bit, and I was doing some insurance work, and trying to figure out why did I learn this whole Kilwins thing, how to make fudge and chocolates and all this stuff. It wasn't really a calling for me to do that. I just, it just, he had done that, so I kind of jumped in there. But then we get a call in January that the store for Highland, the store in Highlands is for sale, and they need someone there quickly. Now, mind you, in the middle of January, my wife is pregnant with our now son, James, over here. And uh, we're like, Wow. Maybe, maybe maybe we could swing this. Maybe we could do this. I don't know. Uh, so we quickly said, send us the information, and maybe maybe we'll make this happen. Well, needless to say, they sent us the information. They We look over it. We kind of agree to, to come here and just manage the store. But we have a house in Florida in 2007 as the market is just plummeting that we got to sell for us all to get up here. So, and then we're looking at managing the business, maybe buying the business. We don't know. If we can't sell the house, we probably can't buy the business. So we're, I'm trying to figure out a way to make it all work. We're excited, but we're scared too. Uh, I mean, we have about 60 days to get here and get started. Uh, and we just find out about this. So we got to sell this house. So... And if we can't sell it, I'm, I'm trying to look at ways to, to borrow money here, to pay for this so we can move here. And I'm doing all these things. And I'd, at the end of the day, after about a month of having the house in the market, not having, I think, maybe one person look at the house, I just thought to myself, I'm lacking faith. If this is truly what God is calling our family to do, then he'll provide. Because there is that says where God guides, he does provide. But so often, and I don't know about you, but I just want to grab it and say, I'll provide. You know, you got me here, but I'll, I'll take it from here. But I slowed down one day and I said, you know what I need to do? My kids thought I was crazy. My wife knows I'm crazy. Is I, I need to get up in the morning and I need to walk this property. And I need to walk the four corners. I need to pray at every corner for God's will. And I did. I got up early. My wife thought somebody was breaking in as I walked by the window. But I walked and I prayed at all four corners of that house. And I said, all right, it's yours. I've given it to you. If this is what you want us to do, if this is how you want to provide, make it happen. Uh, or, or not. Because sometimes I realize sometimes it's better not to make things happen. Garth Brooks song, you know, thank God for unanswered prayers. You know, sometimes that's good. Uh, so, lo and behold, I guess this was God's plan to bring us here, because that afternoon, somebody just pulls in our driveway, 
and says, I've seen your house for sale, but I just keep forgetting to call. But I'm interested. Could I see it right now? And we're like, yeah. <laughs> May not be per perfectly clean, but sure, you can come see it. And so this guy walks in the house, walks around, looks at this. And like I said, there weren't many houses selling at this point in time. And uh, he goes, I like it. I like it. Let me, let me go talk to my aunt, and I'll give you a call back. And that night, he called. And he said, can my aunt come look at it? And we're like, sure. So we're getting a little excited now. We're like, you know, second time around, Andre, is that right? And real estate, they come look at it second time. You're like, okay, I got a little hope here. Uh, so she comes back that night, cash offer. They want to buy our house. I mean, we were just taken back. I'm like, really? Trying to figure it out. Could we have done this? Could and it didn't. Like I said, we're a month. And so we end up here. And I say that because I know we all have those stories, but sometimes we forget those stories. Sometimes we forget those moments where God speaks in our life. And I forget, you know, you go through a dry spell. I mean, we've had so many other times where God has answered our prayer. I mean, many of you know James was sick a couple years ago with lacrosse encephalitis, and so many people were praying, and the doctors were doing all these amazing things, and, but they were at a loss, and they're getting ready to put him in intensive care, and then he snaps out of it. And they, they can't, they, there's no explanation, but we had people praying all across the world because friends that we know here knew people here and there and there, and that's faith. And I think God says, Hang on to it. I'm always there. Maybe not the way that you think I'm going to be there, but I'll be there. And if you're not sure, you know, look at what he did to those lives in the Bible. Look at what he did with Saul when he turned him into Paul. Look at Peter. I mean, look at Stephen. Look at the chances and the risk they took to serve out their faith. And I, I think when you look at the end of the scripture we read this morning, and I Jennifer called and gave me the different uh, scriptures, and I think that struck me, the very end of that scripture, where it says, even in God's weakest moments, I think it's, in, yeah, even, even when God's weak, he's so much stronger than us, and I'm not sure that Paul, God can be weak, but I mean, Paul does write that, but I, I'm not sure he can be weak. So we're all going to go through things. If we're not going through things now, we will. And I think that gives us all a little bit of anxiety. I mean, it does me, you know, is that we are going to go through things. We are going to have adversity, you know, because this is not our home. So as you go through that, as you move through life in its various stages, realize that he's there. I mean, I, I can give you examples of my life, and I'm sure if I hand this microphone out there, you folks can give me examples of your lives, of how God has moved. So I leave you with that. Let God move in your life and see what potential you have. It's amazing. So let's bow our heads and pray as we prepare. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this opportunity to share your word, to share how your word has impacted my life and the life of my family and my friends and those people around me. I thank you for this church and for this body and just uh, for the power of this 909 service. It's just been amazing, the people that walk through these doors and fill up this room. So thank you for this opportunity to worship you and just ask for your blessing upon these folks as we go out into this week and try to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. I love to tell the story of